code caves. So, um, just to give you a quick overview of what a uh, code cave is, so we'll go into a bit more detail in the in the tutorial. But just a quick um, overview of it is really that. Um, as you can see, here are some instructions. If you haven't seen any of these before, this tutorial might be a bit too difficult for you. So I'm just going to hide this for a second because that's annoying. Um, it, it's probably a good idea to go and check out some of my early tutorials, really. But moving on, as you can see, a couple of the instructions here. Um, for example, um, what co a code cave is, let's say this is the beginning of a function here, this uh, sub. Um, what it does is ultimately let's say it starts here and it ends there you can put it doesn't really matter if it's the beginning or the end of a function but what you can do is you can put your own code anywhere let's say you put your own code here and instead of this push we'll do a jump to our own code and then write our own thing so let's say this sub ESP for example so it's uh, subtracting 14 away from ESP uh, the ESP register so let's say that ESP re uh, register is currently holding our health and an enemy shoots us with a sniper for example and that sniper will deal 14 damage um, I'm pretty sure that's not the case here but for example if that's the case and our 14 health comes down what we can do as you know is just change that 14 to nothing so instead of subbing uh, 14 it subtracts nothing which leaves our health the same and that in turn would make us invincible towards the sniper what we are doing in code is we're ultimately modifying what's in here but we're going to be able to add our own stuff as well so on this first one what we're doing is uh, ignore that for now what we're doing is um, we're just incrementing our ammo instead of decrementing it and that's very easy to do in most cases but the way we're going to do it is a little bit more complex um, I guess once you get used to it, it becomes very easy so that's what we're going to be doing for that uh, we're going to create a code cave and what will happen is instead of this subtracting uh, something for example or, or in our example it's a decrement instead of decrementing what we'll do is we'll jump into our own code and we'll say increment instead of decrementing run the original code and then jump back to the original function and in case you're not familiar with this you can do an immense amount of things you can ultimately create your own function that has uh, an insane amount of things uh, where you run the games code and then you run also your own code which um, let's say for example you wanted to um, to decrement uh, instead of decrementing your armor you want to increment it and let's say give a power boost to your weapon as well um, if you knew the code that was required to do that you could do that but you'll see that this is incredibly useful so the second hack that we're going to be creating is um, this one here so as you can see what I've done is I've done um, I've made it so we're basically flying so we've done a flying hack here that's ultimately what we have. It's a very tricky one. It's a very, very basic one, but it has the key components of it. We could always smooth the flying afterwards, but uh, we're going to leave that for now. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, well, on this one, for example, what we're going to do um, is we're going to grab the position of the y-axis of the player. So if you haven't done any sort of... Uh, teleport or hack or anything like that this may be a bit strange but don't worry about it it'll, it'll make sense once we get to the code so what we're doing here is we're going through code and let's say we're going to do the same thing again we're going to create our own jump and don't worry if this sounds a bit tricky at first um, so let's say uh, we have uh, void please ah oh, that looks terrible <laughs> looks absolutely terrible uh, let's say void function that's our own function there um, uh, and then that will be it. That looks terrible. That's fine. And that will be our own function. What we'll do is we'll jump into that, and the function will actually be written in assembly inside, which will be the tricky bit. That's one of the difficult things about code caving. And let's say we get to this bit of code, we simply jump into there, uh, and that goes into our function. We run our code, and once the function's done, we run to the next instruction after that happened, and that's ultimately what code caving is: is jump onto your own stuff. It's like detouring ultimately, but we're going to be doing that fully ourselves. Um, so you jump to our own function, run that our code, and then get back to that one. So that's what we're going to be doing. And for the um, for the flying, what, what what's going to happen is, let's say uh, we have the flying. So let's get rid of that. Let's say we have the flying variable. Um, here in ESP again as an example Let, let's say that's stored there what we do is we're gonna rob that value let's say it it's stored in zero times one two three in memory it looks like a five-year-old drew this um, 
it looks like uh, <clears throat> yeah so let's say it's in one two three in memory um, we're gonna grab that value and say give me that and we've just taken that pointer and now jump back to the old code so we've taken that value store it in one of our variables access it and overwrite it so let's just go back up and what we do is we overwrite that value and as you can see as I sp press space we increment the y-axis and if I press control we decrement it so that's just an example and that's what we're going to be doing as well so those are two different ways to use code caving you can use this in many many different ways and the, the possibilities to, for your own hacks are absolutely limitless um, and and I could have quite a few more examples of this but these are just to cover a few different areas um, I'll, I'm thinking of doing another tutorial on this later on but for now this should really be good enough for you to do your own sort of work um, and yeah, so um, let's move from there. Okay, so let's start the tutorial sort of, I guess not start, but move on from it um, with the logic behind mid-hooking. So some of the, uh, the way this works is, or at least the way we're going to do it is first by, we're going to find the memory address that we're looking for in the game. So first of all, it's going to be ammo. We're then going to find what accesses or writes, writes in our example, to that address in Cheat Engine. We're going to get the instruction address to modify or add our own instructions to. So uh, that's where we're going to do all the jumping to our own work. And then we're going to do a signature scan. Excuse me. We're going to do a signature scan um, on that address, which is something we covered on the previous tutorial. And um, finally, yeah, this is just so we know um, where the instructions are all the time. So that'll make our life really easy and we don't have to do any pointer scanning and etc. And then finally we're going to hook that instruction with and run our own code instead of that instruction or maybe that instruction as well as our code depends uh, which one are we we're doing really um, so what's some of the advantages to this now since I've started doing this I've realized it's much better than just normal um, normal sort of hack building that I was doing before um, so using this with uh, pattern scanning which is what we'll be doing uh, removes any need for to look for pointers so you find the first address once you have that address, you can do everything from there. You don't need to go through five, six, seven, eight levels of, point, of uh, pointers. Uh, you're fine. You find the dynamic address, and from there, you can do everything else. Um, it works in absolutely every single game uh, that I've tried so far. So, uh, because it uses assembly, it's the way every single game works. So, it works beautifully that way. It uses inline assembly. So, um, that is sort of an advantage and a disadvantage um, and by using assembly within our code it means we're, we're running exact same code to what's being performed there uh, on the game um, so like I said we could do our own jumps and and go to our own functions and it can use to pretty much code anything uh, to hook anything I mean uh, so I've used it before to hook uh, direct 3d um, devices and so on and to create those sort of hooks and some of the disadvantages are you can it's not very difficult to be found with uh, things like by things like VAC because we are changing uh, bytes in the game uh, so if they do a, um, a byte scan as well to look for um, for their own uh, written uh, patterns if they don't match and they see that our code is put in there we're, we're gonna get banned so um, it is a bit of a tricky one, but it's incredibly useful if you use it well. And the hooks, like I said, have to be in assembly, so this is both an advantage and disadvantage. Um, because of that, if you're not very familiar with ASM, it's it can be very, very difficult if you're used to just going in C++. So it's something you guys should definitely start practicing and try and learn a bit more of. Um, it doesn't work for 64 big games is something I found, and this is because um, Visual Studio has... Um, decided to be an asshole and stop uh, inline assembly uh, for 64-bit versions of source code. I'm sure there's a workaround for that, but I haven't I haven't looked too much for it. Um, so yeah, that's another small setback really. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. A um, couple of credits that I would like to give before I start the tutorial. So big thanks to Agent Smith um, uh, for helping me out with the code case. So thanks for that, mate. Um, Thanks to C5 and Insane for the hooking tutorials they did. Um, Insane's from MPGH um, and uh, C5's on our forums, um, guidedhacking.com. And um, yeah, thanks for that, guys. So, 
requirements that you need for this tutorial is um, I recommend that you see the signature scanning tutorial which uh, happened previously I'll put a link on the screen right now if you haven't seen it I recommend you go see it. it's a fairly short tutorial and it'll make a lot more sense when we're doing it here if you have done uh, pattern scanning before uh, and you're on hacks then you're fine you shouldn't you should, don't need, really need to go see that uh, obviously you need cheat engine for some of the stuff we're going to do you need Oli debug with the signature scanning plugin um, that's recommended it's not a must but I really recommend that you have it, especially for the new guys a salt cube or the game any other game of your choice uh, I recommend you use a salt cube first and then once you have that working use it on your own games um, Visual Studio 2008 10 or 12 will be fine with C++ and a DLL injector and I recommend this remote DLL uh, injector here if if you have any trouble injecting DLL just uh, search for on my YouTube uh, channel search for uh, injecting DLLs and I've got a tutorial just for that that I've done quite recently um, and uh, at least basic knowledge of assembly would be great I mean you don't have to have it with what I'm gonna do here but uh, as I'll be explaining most of it but uh, if you have that that'll be more useful um, Couple of reasons why we're going to use a Soul Cube. Everyone can get it. It's a free game. Uh, the reason why I always say this is because uh, everyone always asks me why don't you do this on this game or that game. I do it with a Soul Cube because everyone has access to it pretty much. Um, it's only a 45 megabyte file, so it's very easy to download. Um, and like I said, this method can be used in pretty much any game. I've used this for games like Our Last Saints Row, uh, Splinter Cell, and a few of my other newer sort of hacks. Um, and it's very very consistent that's one thing I've noticed about this it's very consistent which makes it absolutely beautiful it's not like searching for pointers in certain games where it's completely different so what we're gonna start off by doing is we're gonna get the addresses and instructions that we need so we've got this now I'm gonna kill my salt cube version and start a new one uh, so kill that uh, just so I'm not running the hack that's fine and run a salt cube again so what we're going to start off by doing is uh, open up cheat engine so I'm going to run mine so make sure you run yours as well uh, attach and select AC client as usual so we're now in the game so that's fine let's move on to that um, that's cool um, so if we go down I'm just gotta adjust my chair so yeah we've got cheat engine open in the salt cube and we're going to start off by searching for ammo this is something we've done many times before so as you can see here 14 is our current ammo search for it take up a couple of shots uh, search for 10 as usual I'm not going to go too much into detail because this is really basic stuff we've got 10 left now uh, it's going to be well, obviously it's not the top one um, it's either either one of these so one is the one that's displayed on screen and one is the one that we have stored so obviously it's not this one because I've just changed it so it has to be this one as you can see, it changed 14. Beautiful. That's what we're looking for. So let's get rid of the first one because that's the wrong one. So make sure you change yours just to test. So freeze it if you like and just take a bunch of shots. Um, so what we're going to do now is we found our ammo and we're going to go right click, find what writes to this address. Okay. Yes, we want to attach a debugger. Nothing happens. Take a couple of shots. Oh, there's a, where our ammo decrements. Good stuff. Um, so we've got this address here. Uh, we've done this plenty of times before, very straightforward. Now to confirm that this is the address that decreases our ammo, let's uh, 